Hi, and welcome to Aussie Kicks. On today's show, well, we're going to be deep diving back into the Sierra Cosworth that was gifted to the show on the Tamiya TL, um, cheating, 01LA. I just can't remember the chassis name. And turns out it's pretty rare. Yeah, it only came out in 2002 and was only on four kits, which is two because the other two are just built kits of the same thing. So a really rare chassis. So I'm super chuffed to have that one in the collection. I didn't know much about it, but when I started looking into it, yeah, quite a rare one. Also on this show, we're going to paint up the body, get the decals on it, and I've got a few ideas of what I'm going to do with it in the future. Also, I may give you a sneak peek at the Team Associated 10R5 progress. Yeah, I've managed to make a little bit of headway with it. I've got the body in after a whole hoo-ha of getting the wrong body, and I've cut it all out. What a faff that was. Uh, also, there's been some progress on the 235mm conversion. A few of you have jumped in to help, and we've got bits coming from all over the places. Now, it's not a perfect science, so I've managed to grab a few bits and pieces from people that have helped me out. One is coming from Italy to France, France to the UK, and then to me. And the other one is coming on a slow boat from America, which is another uh, axle and also a conversion. So I'm sure one of those is going to work and we'll be able to turn it into a 235 millimeter monster. Also, I should be getting a body for it reasonably soon as well. So uh, yeah, lots to do and lots to cover. So hit it, Charlie. Can't find the words to say. Pack up We're going say completed it's more of a stage one i'm definitely going to put an interior in it being that it's got the huge great big windows i didn't just do flat black i actually used ps58 which is pole which is a uh, pole clear i put that down first i've never done that before and then i backed it in ps5 black now, the only thing stupidly is, as you can see, this is new. I ran out, so I didn't do the rear spoiler. So you can see there is a little bit of difference. So I managed to pick up another one. So what I've got to do is go back and I'm going to take it off. Then I'll pearl it, then I'll clear it. And hopefully that will make it look closer to the actual black. But if you look closely, you can see there is a pearl in there as well which I think helped because it made it pop a little bit more in real life. It would be totally flat. So uh, you can't really see it on camera that well, but it came out right considering I've never done it before. Can you see it in there? Not really, just looks flat black. Um, then I smoked the windows, which is PS31. Now, one little tip I can give you when you're doing kind of these 3D printed parts and stuff like that, sanding them down and getting rid of the lines is really, really difficult. So what I find a little cheat is this, it's called filler primer and it helps take out those little ridges. Now you can't just slap it on and it will cover every ridge, but between a bit of sanding and the filler primer and then a few layers of paint, you can actually get it to look pretty smooth. One thing I was really surprised about is the wheels. Now I didn't like these wheels at all and I was gonna modify them and change them, but now it's all done. I kind of like them, it adds that bling and this is quite close purely by luck to the actual rims that come on the car. So I think I'm gonna keep them as exactly as they are i think it kind of adds a pop but considering i didn't like them at all and i thought they're really gaudy they actually suit this car perfectly so really really happy with it now obviously this is not a tamiya body this is an aftermarket body so if you're going to do one of these yourself there is a few little tips i can give you as well now as you can see here you can still see around the edge because these stickers are thicker so i would definitely recommend cutting them out yourself don't just peel them off they were also cut out for you as well so that's what it looks like when it's just cut out and you put it on but then if you go back and start cutting around them it does help 
if you've got more time than I did, it's probably worth taking even more longer to cut out as much as possible because it definitely would help being that these are like aftermarket because they're just really, really thick. One thing I did notice as well, you see it's three lines here, two lines there. It should actually be three lines from there on to match that. So that is a mistake in this kit. Not that it makes a great deal of difference. Also, I'm pretty sure you can actually get light buckets now. I haven't hunted around. Um, there is a little part that goes in here, but I actually quite like the sticker. So I just went with the sticker. So maybe down the line, I might sort the lights out and see if I can, because it's such a big part of the car. The window masks fitted perfectly. So uh, that was something you sometimes don't see in aftermarket kits that they, they haven't taken the time. Also, all these stickers that go around the window actually fit really well. There wasn't too much of a struggle with those. One that was a struggle that needs to be a bit longer. This line that comes all the way around here is actually joined in the middle. You can see it there. And I really struggled to get it to meet in the middle. It was too short. So it does fit, but I had to stretch it a lot. I don't know why it's not just in one, one line. It would actually be better if this was in one line instead of two. From a fitting it point of view, it's much easier to actually just attach it, go round, put a bit of tension on it, line it up instead of trying to do two. Cutting it doesn't actually make it easier, it makes it harder. Also this kit, these are in black and on a lot of the cars they are in actually blue, but I guess different versions. And from what I've seen, there is slightly different versions of this car, but the rest of the decals are all pretty decent. They all are exactly what they should be. Funny thing that Tamiya never made this. They actually made a kit model version of it. Um, so why they didn't end up making this? Now, Kurosho did one. Quite rare and quite hard to get hold of now. But why Tamiya didn't, I honestly don't know. Right, do you want to have a look at the Team Associated 10R5? Right, let's take a look. So I'm almost ready to paint and fitting this body was a total nightmare. I haven't quite finished it. I've got to do the end things and I've got to go around and sand it down. But it now actually fits on the car. Now, this is a 190 millimeter. This is an M10 pan car body and it only just fits. There is no margin for error whatsoever. Getting this to go on this body was an absolute nightmare. There, there is no holes. You have to line up the holes yourself. And yeah, it did take a while. One thing that's an absolute nightmare, so I had to come up with this. I couldn't find another way around is I've had to actually cut a hole for the brushless motor. There is no other way to have this motor apart from in this orientation. I've tried it all the way around on all, all different sides. And there is, you can't get out the back because you've got the uh, axle. You can't go down because it won't come out here and go round. It won't go into the car either because underneath here, you've got the suspension aspect. So up is the only way. And if you want to line up your wheel arches, um, so, you know, you want to have a little bit of give for the suspension but any more than that would look stupid and there's no way. So I had to come up with a hole and then I fed it over and it will go that way. It doesn't look too bad. It'll be okay once it's painted up, you know, just seeing these three wires go over, but there is no way to do it unless you put brushed in this or you go with a brushless motor where you can actually solder the wires on in a different position or something. But this wasn't going to work, but I'm quite happy with it. Now, obviously, this body is only going to be on this car for a short period of time because we're going to convert it to two, three, five millimeters. So this is going to be in. I don't know. I'm going to do red and black, I think. It does look pretty decent, but uh, yeah, very difficult. Also, it warps um, the way it sits. It's not exactly level as well. So getting the arches to be the same on both sides is really difficult. It's taken a lot of faffing around to get it right. And it also, because of the way it is here, it curls up both sides and you need the rear spoiler to actually hold it in place. But I got it as close as I can and it all functions and drives. So, you know, you can turn all the steering and everything and the suspension all works and it won't, um, 
won't foul or anything, but what a faff. But I'm thinking black and red, maybe. Maybe this section in red and then the rest in black. I don't know, we'll have to see. But in the upcoming episode, I will paint this up and then we're gonna drive it. And then hopefully all the other parts are gonna arrive so we can convert it. Now, a lot of people ask me how many projects I've got on the go. So I've sorted them all out onto shelves. So <laughs> I'll go through them quickly just to give you an overview. That is a hot shot that's fully working, but needs fully restoring is vintage. So uh, that needs to come on the show and have a total rebuild. Then I have the big wig here. This big wig is in pretty decent condition, but needs to be fully restored. Then I've got a viewer gifted car the formula one car that has a broken upright and it needs to be sympathetically restored this is my fake top force i have a new body for it and i need to sort out some of the titanium screws on it so that's going to be done then we've got the center has no chassis so really it's just waiting for a chassis that's going to work for it then we have the audi quattro waiting for a full restoration then we've got the ultimate xls that's got everything you could ever imagine bolted to it but the body needs to be done so that's getting close it just needs to have the body painted up then i have an original uh, optima that needs a full restoration and a new body on it then we have the formula one cars that i've had on the show before this is a schumacher racing icon it needs to have the body painted up and then i have the mar dave uh formula one car Again, needs to have the body sorted on it. Both cars do fully run. They've, they are actually been run on the show before, but I must finish those. And as you can see, it's been sitting here for quite a while. So I must get those done. And then really I should sell one on and keep one because it's having two fully operational um, Formula One cars is a bit crazy, really. Then we have my drift car. Hasn't really made much progress. I managed to get hold of the body for it now. So it needs to be painted up. And I need to do the mounts for the body, as obviously that body doesn't belong to that chassis. Then we have the one that's asked about the most. This one is the uh, chassis swap on the Porsche 959. And uh, as you can see, it's still waiting to be painted up. It does fully work and drive and everything. And uh, it just needs to be painted up. So that one. <laughs> then we have another one down here. This was a viewer gifted car quite a while ago. There's his uh, letter that he sent. This is a car that he raced back in the day. So that needs a full restoration. And then I've got some parts to go on it as well. So this is just a parts car now. And uh, yeah, and I've had some bits off this to go on to my Super Manta Ray. After that, there is the down tucked away here i don't know if you can see that it's a bit tight here is my king cab that's all fully done just needs the body doing but i need to get a new body for it really if i'm going to go to the trouble of painting it up but all the car is all in lovely condition and it's got a ttc gearbox and all the bells and whistles on that one apart from maybe upgrading the shocks to high caps now to all you team associated RC10 fans. Well, this is my collection that you see on the show quite often, but you'll notice up in the left hand corner, there is a new offering. Now it's got an old body off one of the others, but I now have another RC10 vintage buggy that will be on the show soon, but spoilers. So you just have to wait and see.